Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is the US Futures Weekly Chart Analysis for the week ending 14th of July 2023. First chart, as usual, is the US Dollar Index Futures. Now you can see that price has accelerated lower this week and it's threatening to break down. We draw in the lows of the range. They come through here. You've got some last gasp levels through there. But price is definitely threatening to break down. It may even have broken down. Now, when you're looking for confirmation of this sort of potential breakdown, if you get a down bar, downside follow through, with at least an average spread in response, an average volume, then that will serve as confirmation of the breakdown. You may even find price attempts to recover the lost ground, but then fails to do so and price accelerates lower again. That will serve as confirmation. It's a failure to recover the previous breakdown line. But if you do get just a weak down bar and then some form of recovery, you haven't got confirmation. And there will be some times when you'll get an absolute reversal here. The price will reverse back and together this will form a shakeout over two bars. So that's what to look for next week. Now, where price might go, if we expand out a little bit here. Now, what we're looking for are little areas in the past where price has found support previously. Because although it won't be exact, you'll find that price will attempt to find support where it has done previously. So you can see in this little level here, here's the highs of the range. And that's where price is at the moment. And that'll last down to here. So what you can say is price has now broken down below these lows and has found at least temporary support right on top of old previous support. Here's the previous support zone through here, and price has found at least temporary support right on top of it. Now you might find this zone is tested or the market attempts to find support within it in the future. We'll just have to wait and see. Below that, you've got this level here, the highs of the range probably come through there. The lows through here, and I would call that last gasp level is the true range of the previous support through there. And same over there. So you can see if this level didn't hold, price would likely move down into this level. Now, these won't be exact levels. The market will fine tune them. But what normally happens is previous support levels serve to be a guide as to where the market will support again in the future. Doesn't always work, but always look back at the previous support zones and they'll help you work out where the market may go. Okay, next chart is the E-mini S&P. This is S&P 500 index futures. And we've been looking at this for a while. There's some absorption through here. Just below this breakout level, the price pushed out. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've suggested that this was some form of bullish absorption as the market attempts to go through this level of resistance above. And to be honest, there'll be supply being drawn out right through here, and there's clear air above this level. So, I would expect this market is going to attempt to absorb its way through. It certainly looks quite strong at the moment. Look at these down bars here and the corresponding volumes. As price moves lower and threatens to move down, there's no supply. There's no selling pressure. This market is seeing the volumes on the upside. As prices move higher, volumes are above average or higher than the down bars. So this market is looking stronger than weaker at least at the moment, and the way the market is setting up here, price looks like it's forming a bullish absorption pattern. So you might well see price continue to move in here like this as it attempts to absorb its way through 
this whole broader zone of previous resistance through here. Everything looks fine though, no great issue. This is US Treasury 10 year note futures. And just to put some lines in so you can see where we've been in the past. They're the main levels to look at. You can see price threatened to break down, came down to previous support two weeks back. But this week price has reversed, partly because the US dollar has weakened this week and that's allowed this market to pop up higher. But what you've ended up with is a potential shakeout over two bars here. And if that proves correct, you'll see price push higher again in response. There'll be upside follow through. Now you may find that early next week, there'll be a test for supply. That's early next week. And if supply is found to be low, then the market will continue higher and you'll end up with a bar that actually pushes up a bit higher than this close here or higher, depending on what happens in the US dollar. But I would expect, seeing as volume was increased this week, it was only about average, but it was increased, you'll get a test for supply almost certainly next week, early in the first day or two. And then from there, price will move depending on how much supply is drawn out. Copper price futures. Copper price futures, here's the lows of the old range. Now you've got resistance above this level here. And that's what's caught all of this. And there's no real intent to move higher here. Supply was being drawn out. You can see all the closes that were below their highs. So supply was being drawn out here. And in response, prices moved lower. Here's your breakdown bar. This is last gasp support. Here's the true lows of the range. You can see that once price moved back down below these levels, Support came in down here. We noted it on this bar here with the increase in volume as price moved lower. This was buying support coming in. And then price moved out. Just touched the breakdown line here. Came back. Didn't find any supply. Look at the volumes. It's a bit of a reloading there. And then prices moved back up to the breakdown line here. This is where resistance currently sits. There is very little resistance within this level now. What sellers were present there have probably been absorbed or bought, and the market was relatively free to move within this zone. It's going to be a bit more serious if price attempts to push back into the old zone above. Gold price futures. Sort of a similar story with gold price futures as to copper. Although this market has been a little stronger, here is the zone of resistance above. You can see price moved up to it here, came back, pushed through and above, found some supply drawn out here, price moved back. There was an attempt to find support within that zone. Price just dropped out a little bit below. And this often happens, I call it the shadow of the zone. If there was a light shining from above, this zone would cause a shadow just below it. And when price moves just below the zone, often there is support found just below, and that's what's happened here. As soon as price dropped out, there was support being found in the market, and prices popped up this week. Possibly not with as widespread as you would expect, considering the weakness in the US dollar. So there probably is still some supply coming out from the left here, which isn't surprising and is expected. Volume was quite high this week. Spread was increased, but it wasn't particularly wide. So you'll definitely see some testing for supply in response, almost certainly. And then the market will move depending on how much supply is drawn out. So if supply continues to be drawn out, you might over the next day, and I'm drawing daily bars here, 
find something like this before price can attempt to move higher. Silver price futures, similar to gold and copper, you've got a zone of previous resistance coming through here. Price did find some issues with it through here. Price pulled back. It moved right up to the highs of the zone. Now, this will weaken this zone. There may still be some supply drawn out from this breakdown bar, but this zone, the overall strength of the zone from back here has been weakened when price moved right up to the highs of the range. Price pulled back into the shadow of the, of the zone and it found support through here, remembering that this bar looks more like that. And price has moved above the recent highs just there and has closed quite strongly, to be honest, on not excessive volume. So that's a pretty good and strong move. If that was excessive volume, I'd say it'll test for supply for sure. But volume was actually slightly below average and spread was wide. So that's showing you that selling pressure was really quite low. Now this market's a lot more volatile than copper and gold. When it goes, it goes in either direction. But selling pressure was very low this week by the looks. And that's allowed for the spread to be much wider than you would have expected otherwise on slightly below average volume. So that's a good sign. If the other two markets do test for supply in response, you may find this one does too, at least initially next week. But I expect it to be a very narrow spread. Price will hardly pull back at all. And that would be a sign of strength in itself if that's the case. And then the market will move depending on how much supply is drawn out, which I expect will be relatively low. Like crude price futures, here's the low of the range, here's the last gasp lows. Price this week moved higher, but it did close off its highs on above average volume. So there is some supply being drawn out, which I guess is expected. There's some supply going to be there. The highs of the range, the mini range probably come through there, I expect and price has just popped out above that this week and it has drawn out a little bit of supply we'll see how much next week similar to those other markets price will pull back a little bit early next week it may not have quite as wide a spread as that that's what a test for supply will look like on a daily or two daily basis and then price will move depending on how much supply is drawn out and when i say that what i mean is if Selling pressure is high and supply continues to be drawn out and the close of this bar is more like down here, then the market will continue to drift lower or even thrust lower and threaten the sellers to come out so they can be absorbed or bought or removed in some fashion. But if selling pressure is very low, then a small amount of demand will allow this market just to float higher. And if any serious demand comes up, price really accelerates higher. So the market will test for supply all the time. And depending on how much supply is drawn out will depend on what the market does in response. Aussie dollar currency futures. We've had price in this pretty tight range for some time. I noted here that we had an equal and opposite reaction. And that's exactly what happened. Price came back into the center of the range. And with the weakness in the US dollar this week, price has pushed higher and now threatens to break out. Now the 70 cent range in this market has always been an important level for the longer term. You've also got a level that comes through here. It'll, it, it'll depend on what happens in the US dollar market this week. If the US dollar finds support, remembering it's sit, sitting right on a previous support zone, if it finds support, then you may find this market 
does what the commodity markets do and test for supply early. And this market will do, for a large degree, the inverse of the US dollar. So if the US dollar heads lower and confirms the breakdown, then this market will move higher. And if the US dollar attempts to recover, this market will push back towards the old trading range. But I would almost certainly expect some form of test for supply early, especially as volume is a little above average. And this market will trade the inverse to a rough degree of the US dollar. Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures continues to trade in absorption mode. Here's the absorption. It's very tight. It's high in the range. The range is here. If this market had pulled right back to these lows, it would be far weaker than this very high attempt to absorb supply in the range. This is more a sign of strength. If the market can complete the absorption right up here, say at 30,000 or not much below it, then that's actually a sign of strength for a future push higher. If supply continues to be drawn out and the market does have to push lower to absorb that supply, or if the supply becomes overwhelming and forces price back down to the lows of the range down here, is obviously a sign of a bit more weakness in the market. But at the moment, this market is doing a good job attempting to absorb the supply being drawn out in response to the rise in price a month ago. And if it completes this, you can see that volume is a little higher this week and price has closed pretty much level the last three weeks. So there is absorption going on. There is supply being drawn out when supply becomes low, this market will be well positioned to make an attempt to push higher. Considering I believe that there is an accumulation zone in the background, and it looks like it's relatively strong, and this is a breakout, a test of the breakout, and this is the initial push higher above the highs, I think the market's doing a pretty good job. There's no rush. At the moment, it's absorbing supply in response to this rise in price a month back. If this is done successfully, price will certainly make an attempt at least to push up to the next level, which is likely to be just above 35,000, about 36,150, I think. Oh, there it is there, 36,150. If supply continues to be drawn out, and it becomes overwhelming or a bit of an issue, you'll probably see price pull back a little bit more deeply and threaten those sellers to some degree. The next lower level is 25,000. That's the highs of the accumulation zone. And if price was forced back to this level before any attempt to push higher, this would be considered a secondary test of the breakout. Here's the initial test. And if price came right back, this would be a secondary test of the breakout. I'm not saying that'll happen at the moment. At the moment, it looks like it's pretty strong and doing a good job. And just back quickly to the US dollar index futures. It's pretty obvious what's happening here. Here's the lows of the range where support had been found previously. Here is the highs of an adjacent previous support zone. Price has logically come down to that level and found support right on top of that zone. Now, whether there's an attempt to recover in response next week, if that's what happens, then you'll find the commodity markets will all be down in response as this market moves higher, as will the Aussie dollar and associated currencies. And then it will depend on whether price is strong enough to recover above this breakdown line or if price rejects and then moves lower and that would be a confirmation of this threatening bar. The other response is for price to move 
down within this zone. There'll be support all the way through this zone, previous support, and then the market may attempt to find support within it. Okay, that's my lot. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Thank you. See ya.